Look at the damage. What do you reckon is going to happen in the next 25 years? When you've got more addicts. When you've got more dealers fighting for turf. When you've got more families broke down. You've got families being started now by addicts. Half of you's kids dealing. Look what the dealers done to your mother. Look what they done to your mum. Why do you want to go on and continue that cycle? You should be dead against that. Not caught up in it. And there's hundreds of you's kids in our city. Who's mar and dar is on crack and smack. And you float with these rats that's destroyed your parents. You're running round for them. They ruined your family. There's a reason why you're in the head and your mouth on smack and crack. Because of that. What are you moving with them for? Address yourself. Sort your head out. And it's all you kids that are developing names for them. It's you kids that are gamers. Coming from that addict's house. Coming from that woman there that snorts and coke all her life and is now on the crack. It's you kids that get used the most. It's you kids that are flying round on your two, two and a half grand motorbikes letting shots off. Getting used by the same people that destroyed your mar and army. It doesn't make sense, kid. Trust me. Use little gangbangers in Norris Green. She might have got an addiction. How did she get that? Think about it. Stop being stupid. You're ruining your kids' lives. Every kid round here, you know what it's like growing up with a man that's on the smack. Why would you want to do that to other kids, lads? You know, you want to be looking at them rats that do it. And they haven't got mums on addictions. They haven't got sisters for addictions. They haven't got a dad who's in jail. These are just dirty, dying greedy drug dealing scumbags that have created addictions for money on the back of your ma and your da and your sisters and brothers and you just don't give a shit you're out there acting like them creating more victims you're a victim to their behavior you don't even know it and there's loads of you out there doing their dirty work the same cunts that ruined your ma Ruined your family, mates. Think about it. You should be taking heads off, not running around for them. That's what you should be doing, stopping that dead in its tracks. I need to calm down or I'm just going to start going off on one. But it is what it is, you know, I'm only speaking sense here, mates. Half of you kids are caught up in what you call a matrix. You need to break out of it. Trust me. See, there's a reason why you're all dressing in black like ninjas, bombing round in salons. There's a reason why you're all armed to the teeth like helmets. Think about what you're caught up in. Think about it. One or two years I'll get to Spain. That's because you've shot someone for the drug dealer. That's it. The rest of you is staying on that estate. It's happy days if you go to New Brighton. This is how you are in the head, kid. The world is huge and you've got access to it you want to sit on a state chatting shit with dickheads that in the next 10 years are going to be in jail dead or full of addiction fact anyway it is what it is choose a life not a knife stay away from that might be difficult might be difficult getting out there putting an eight hour shift in on something might be difficult getting out there and avoiding these circles of people. It's going to be difficult because you're not used to it. You've never tried it. It's going to be difficult. Like everything first time. It's difficult. Do you understand? You're going to sacrifice certain people when you start changing the way you think. This is what happens. If you continue to think on street level, you remain on street level. Do you understand? In the true context of things, if your mind is street level, you're in the gutter. Switch the way the thinking. You're, if you're sitting there thinking, jail to me is a part of my life, you are thinking in gutter. Do you understand? You shouldn't be thinking like that, kid. 
You shouldn't be sitting there thinking, oh yeah, my life's dealing drugs and I might go to jail for a few years here. I might go a little few... That's not good thinking for yourself, lads. And that's the way you're thinking. Stop it, mate. Elevate yourself. Honest to God, la. Just a switch in what you're doing and how you're behaving will elevate you consciously. Will open different avenues, different doors, different people to meet. You're not damaged like me. You're not damaged like me. You might think you're damaged. How old are you? 19, 20, 21. Yeah, you've got a little gram of damage. Trust me, the deeper you get, more damage done. The longer you're in there, the heavier the load. Simple as that, la. The sooner you can come out of that and return round on that path and get back to the beginning and go down that way, the better for you because you've got to do it. You can spend 20 years on that path of destruction. And guess what? If you're not dead or lifed off, you will turn round and have to come all the way back just to get peace of mind. And you'll still have years of recovery to go to even start your next path. If you're on it now, back out. You can feel your life getting scatty on it if you're starting. You know, the first few months it's sweet. All of a sudden you've got new activities. There's cars, there's birds, there's places to go, there's money coming in. You're feeling important because your phone's ringing a little bit, ba ba bam. Everything's great for a year and then douche. Someone gets jealous. Someone goes a little bit too far with someone's bird in the group. Something gets said, all of a sudden there's a little bit of madness going on in this group. He's just splitting up. Bang, you're on one mate, 20 years of in hell. Trust me on it. 20 years of hell mate. I'll tell you straight, that life is hell. When you're in it, you don't feel it. You know, when you're in it, amongst it, you don't feel it. It's like an addiction. You know, when you've got that substance every day, you don't really feel the damage. As soon as that substance took away, then you start feeling the damage. And that's the same with 20 years in gang culture. Whilst you're in there, you don't feel no damage at all. You're just going with the craziness. You're just on this madness, fitting in with the gang, the mentality. Lost your identity, group identity. You're just doing what every other cunt's doing. <laughs> going to jail. Look at every little gang. Where do they end up? Jail. It doesn't matter if they turn from thieves, burglars, into top-rated drug dealers in your area. Where have they ended up? What do they do when they get out? What do they do when they get out? Start again. Why? Because the skint. The skint. Honest to God, mate. Wasted. Look, look at half of them now. What are they doing now? The ones that managed to avoid a life sentence. The ones that managed to avoid a theory record being shot dead. What are they doing? Not many of them have got them big property empires, mate. You know, majority of them are working class lads now. On building sites, laying cables, bricklaying, electricians. And guess why they're working there? Because they got the qualifications out of jail. Could have just spent a year in college, got the same qualifications and done no jail at all. None. 20 years saving, creating babies, paying mortgages for houses. <whistles> that is the good life, believe it or not. Honest <laughs> to God. That's good life, mate. Just having a three bedroom out off the council and having your children fed, healthy and warm. He's all taken for granted, mate. Honest to God, he's all taken for granted. But the, the gangbangers, use gangbangers out there, understand what I'm saying to you, is like, it's great, isn't it? I was exactly the same to you. He's addressed the way 
no one had seen anyone dress until we dressed like the way you are now. And this is a meteorite. Honest to God. We were the first kids to be sat there in big houses with masks on, low alpines and gloves on with pieces in our pockets. There was no other group in Liverpool doing what we were doing at that time. Yeah, there was all little gangbangers, but they were all dressed in beautiful, colourful clothes, standing on street corners, thinking they're mad. We were ghetto. We were blacked out on the corner 24-7. And then other people followed suit. And I'm not just chatting shit. So, for example, we'd go to Croxted and we'd go into Wes Brown's territory and we'd be looking at kids dressed in fat farm clothing. Baggy clothing, American fat farm clothing, you know, proper rap news clothing. That's what Wes and his boys were like back when we were out years and years ago. So when we went down to Wes's, everyone was in colourful clothes, didn't matter where you go, everyone had bright clothes on on their corners. When we drove past their corners, we could count how many bodies were on the corners, we could see how many people were there, everything. When they drove past us, they were lucky to see the end of a blunt being blazed. That was the difference. Honest to God, I'm not just saying this, I'm not trying to big myself up, I'm just saying, we started that trend of blacking yourself out, mate. No one else was doing it. Obviously, you got it from a few American videos, but there you go. <laughs> we began it here. And then before you know it, where's and all that? Blacked out, militants. All the little groups around the city all blacking themselves out, militants. You know, before that, the flying round on quads and KX125s and that, in luminous bright trackies with AKs, I'm not lying, AKs strapped to the back. You would see on a regular occurrence, when Danny got out of jail, and to keep him out of jail, he got put on this graft and he could have the night graft. So the graft, when Danny got out of jail, to keep him out of jail, he was told, listen, you haven't got to do nothing. All you've got to do is monitor it. Just sit back, watch it. Any shit kicks in, stop it from happening. You can have that graft from 11 till 6 bells in the morning. So the day graft was 6 till 11. And then the night graft kicked in 11 till 6. Day graft was my man's, because it was his graft initially. And then the night graft got given to Danny just to keep him. There were no night graft in the first place. So everything was running smooth. Neighbours were getting their heads down at a certain level at night. There weren't no madness on the estate till ones and twos in the morning. Everything was just sweet. The graft weren't coming as bang on on as it was. You know, it was like a madness in that estate first thing in the morning. I'm talking, and I'm not bullshitting you, waiting in a queue. 136 punters. I'm not lying. Bang on. 20 past nine, soon as the post he'd opened. <whistles> they were just queuing up. So it was horrendous. And then it continued round the clock. But it used to stop at 11. So me thinking, keep Danny out of jail. Let him bend, ask him. Can Danny bend on with him? So I went, but, but, can he bend on with you? Yeah, go ahead then. So the kids went, right, you've got that graph from 11 till 6. It's a night graph. Obviously, there's other night graphs in the area. So they're all getting shook up, these are the night graphs, because we're starting to tap into the night graph. So it's causing friction before it's even began. Do you understand what I'm saying? Certain people think they've got the night graph locked down and we're just going, no, you haven't. So we tap in. Danny's there. Danny's... Mates with Wes, mates with other crazy kids from around the city. And, and they all just come to the estate because Danny's grafting on the estate now, all right? You're guessing what's going on here, aren't you? So anyway, it was going sweet for a bit. You know, Danny's making a killing off this. Everything's just as smooth as it is in the day. It's like the customers had to go somewhere else because our graft shut at 11 o'clock. Now the graph's not shut at 11 o'clock, the customers don't have to go nowhere else. 
So people in the area have just lost pure customers. <laughs> Not intentionally. You know, we didn't go out going, da -da 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 -da. it's just the way it works, how it is. You were using our customers because our phone weren't on. Now the phone's on, they're just coming naturally. So it went from peaceful. It went from the punters off the Netherfield Road, the Islington, you know, all the brasses. That's the night graft, basically, your prostitutes. That's the majority of your night graft in every city. The red light district, all right? The people who work in them areas are your custom of a night on your phone when it's a craft graft and that. So it went from just running smooth, no problems, to all of a sudden you'd have um, prostitutes like Natalie Riley. Just use Natalie as an example, yeah? Used to be a boss bird, ended up on the coke, ended up on the crack, selling a body on Scotty and Neddy. Yeah? So, um, what she used to do is bump her punches. So she'd stand on Netherfield Road, you'd get a pave, pull over, she'd get in, she'd go, yeah, let's go up here, can you have me money first so I can score me drugs and then we'll go and do the ding. Soft go, yeah. On our estate, you'd have an opening here and an opening up there, one way in, one way out sort of thing. So the punters used to slam her at the bottom, She'd get out the car, come in, score, cough. Took this five or ten minutes to get the balls to come up. Where is she? She's got me money. Shh. Go away, mate. Don't cause a scene while Big Danny's here. <laughs> Honest to God, he doesn't give a key or break your back, Ed. Just shh. And Danny was lick and crack himself, you know, he's probably banging Natalie. <laughs> Honest cops. It's just the way he ended up, Danny, on a mad one. So, um, now, these kids are coming up complaining, this tranquil estate that everyone was quiet, coming on score and getting off. It's now a crime scene every other night. I'm not bullshitting, he's crime scenes every other night. It brought the whole graft roast or not. Hey, there was crime scenes now where we stood and grafted going on for 25 hours or something which just stopped the day graft. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So when Danny and Wes had had a mad one. <laughs> Listen, I had a flat, remember I told you I had a flat right face in the graft and I could just look on the estate and see everything. Right, I had the top floor of the shop and I could see everything. And I'm, it was a regular occurrence to see Danny and Wes on a Raptor with an AK or a shotty strapped to the back, just bombing around like that. I'm not lying, lad. Oh, God. Came as mates.